underside of our zip, we now need to stitch our top side down with our facing. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing now. We do that in two stages. The first stage is by stitching the facing to the zip tape, and the second stage is by top stitching around it. Okay, so the first thing we literally do is we put our right sides of our pant leg together. Now remember, this is actually a pant leg. It's going to go out to your, up to your waist, down your side seam. So you'll literally pull your two pant legs out, and you'll make sure that you're when you're all the way are matching all the way down on the outside edge here. And then we are going to pin on the inside of our centre front seam. We're going to pin all the way down to the edge where our notch is. What we're checking to see is that we've got enough coverage. That's what we're checking for. So I pinned all the way down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open him out like that. As I open him out, I'm checking that I've got coverage there. What I'm trying to maintain is where my two pant legs are stitched together, that stitch in, the, in that little section there, whatever that distance is, it needs to be the same distance all the way up. I've got too much coverage here, that, that bottom section's about perfect, it goes too much and then it goes back to perfect. So I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit so that I get the same amount of coverage the whole way up. Open him out, that's perfect. Get my zip head out of the way. That's perfect, the same amount of cup, the same amount of distance, that underlap distance needs to go all the way up. Once I've done that, I'm then going to open, keep opening him out again, and I'm going to pin through my facing and my zip tape on the other side. Okay, both layers, because this is what I'm going to stitch together. That holds it in place and that sets the distance but this is the part that I'm going to actually literally stitch together. I am going to make sure I might put my pins in the other way, actually, because I'm going to stitch bottom to top on this one. Now, you can doesn't really matter what side you stitch from. You can choose to stitch from this side or that side. Doesn't matter which way, which side you stitch from. I'm going to. I feel my way, so I'm going to use. Um, Put my, run my edge of my um, foot along the edge of my, put that seam out of the way, along the edge of my teeth there, and that's how I'm going to feel my way. Is that a zip of foot when you're doing No, I'm a normal foot. Normal. normal foot back on now, and I'm literally just find where that those teeth are, and I'm going to run my foot right along the edge of those. So the edge of my foot here is on the edge of my teeth all the way up. I'm going but literally you can do it from the other side if you want to it really does not matter what's going to happen when I get to my zipper head yep my foot will not stitch next to my zipper head so I'm literally going to have to unpin it make sure my needle is down in my fabric and literally zip that zipper see, out of the way and I can keep going along the edge of my zipper all the way up cut my ends just before I go any further just do a little bit of a check to make sure nothing moved while I was stitching what I'm checking is that I have a, I've definitely got coverage and I've got coverage so I'm good okay so that's 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 the underside and literally it'll be roughly in the middle of your zipper tape as long as you've caught your zipper tape to your facing fine doesn't matter if it's a little bit closer one way or the other next thing I'm going to do is open him out double check that I've got my coverage and just to pin him in front then I'm going to cut out my template my template here that's on my instructions the reason we have a template is so that we can sew around the edge of it and get a beautiful curve. If we don't have a template, we need to have a really good eye as we're sewing so we get a beautiful curve. Alrighty, but the template is a way of getting a beautiful curve without having to guess. Okay, so I've cut out my template. Ignore the notch because the notch is irrelevant at this stage. I'm going to put a pin in and come down to I find that point where I've stitched my two center fronts together and then I'm going to pin through all of my layers like that. I'm going to flip 
flip it over to see how close that pin is to my stopper at the bottom. If the distance between the stopper, the last metal um, tooth, and my pin is less than five mils, I'm gonna move that pin down till there's at least a five mil gap between the end of the stopper and my pin. And the reason being is that pin is where I'm gonna finish stitching. If I happen to stitch around the corner and hit that stopper, it will break my needle. Now that I've got that stop that, that put in place, I can actually place my template along that folded edge up there and exactly level with my pin at the bottom for my stopper. And I'm going to pin that in place. Take out my pin. Pin that in place. So the edge of my fly facing, right up the top there. Pinning him in place. Because I'm now going to stitch around the edge of that, that, um, that template. What I need to check for a start is I'm going to pin where I'm going to stitch just to check that I'm catching my facing. Because if I'm not catching my facing, it'll be a resubmit. It also mean my pants won't work very well. They'll flap open all the time. Pinned around where I'm going to stitch and I'm checking. Oh, ideally what I want to see is a one centimeter seam allowance around this edge. If it, and, and see where my pins are? It's not quite. So that means I'm going to unpin, still maintain the end level, but I'm going to push it over a little bit. Some people might find that you have to come this way and make it wider. Other people will find that they need to move it around till you've got at least a centimetre seam allowance. Still maintaining that end level with the stopper. Pinning him in place. The reason I put my pin head that direction is because I'm going to be stitching around here and I don't want to run into a pin head, so I'm making sure my pin heads are way out of the way. Let's just do a double check. Now I'm looking much better, getting much, much better. I need to move them over a fraction more, I think. Sorry, I'm just going to move them over a fraction more. It's still not quite in place. Alrighty, now I can stitch down that edge and around, off I go. Literally, I'm stitching right on the edge of my paper. Trying not to catch my paper, but if you do, it doesn't matter, it's only paper. Stitching right down the edge of my paper. I'm a very nervous sewer, so I'm gonna walk it through quite a bit as I go around this curve. My stop sign is going to be my centre front seam, so I don't want to go anywhere beyond my stop sign. Pull my pin out now that I'm getting there. Now you might find that with the bulk of this zip and everything that's underneath it, and I know that I will with mine, with my um, pant, half a stitch and not a full stitch, that it probably won't back tack for me. So I'm going to literally spin it around and stitch back rather than back tack because mine won't. I know the bulk and this machine is not a very confident machine. So instead of doing a back tack, I'm literally just walking it back onto itself. Pull him off. See, put it a little bit. So he should be a beautiful, neat curve and you can trim off your tails. Okay, the next step that we're going to do after break is your fly facing. Um, let's talk through what do we do for a start on this one. Let's do a recap. Recap was I placed, has someone got a sample that I can borrow for a recap? Oh, so you can stop. 